Hello, and welcome to Tip of the Week. My name is Ken Colgan, and I'm with CAD Tech Seminars, LLC, and TheBIMGuys.com. You can check us out on the web at TheBIMGuys.com. We do Revit, Navisworks, and AutoCAD training support and implementation. In this video, we're going to go ahead and show you how to move forward from that previous video, which we talked, talked about placing pile. Now, if I want to create, let's say, a spreadsheet with all the pile, how do I go about and do that? Well, if I go to, let's say, the pile level here, and I see the pile that we put in the previous video, when I highlight that pile, what you'll notice is there are certain criteria that's in here, for instance, where it starts, where it ends, but you'll notice there's no X, Y, and Z. This is kind of a known issue with Revit, not giving that X, Y, and Z for a lot of items. So people have created add-ons to take care of this. Now, there is one add-on in particular, if I go up here, and it's actually called Add Coordinate. Now this tool here will give you the ability to actually go ahead and add that information, well they, their software adds the information to the pile so you could run a quick little script to make that happen. Now where do we find them? If you go out here to the internet, and I'm going to drag this on over, I'm going to go ahead and hit the little shopping cart right there and I'll drag it onto the screen here. You can see there are lots of different apps out there. Uh, right now, I think if you type in Revit, this is uh, October 2022, and I hit enter, you'll notice it says right under 1,000 Revit apps, okay? So what I did, I just typed in uh, pile and then coordinates, okay? And then the first one came up right here. Now there's also XYZ coordinates, and I think that's the one now, uh, what it's called. Let's go see what we can find. All right, there it is. Now, I actually reached out to the person who produced this app, and at the time, when I came down here, you'll notice it says version 2022. They're actually working on the 2023 version as we speak. So, uh, good stuff here. Now, I've loaded it. I've loaded the trial version. The actual cost of this app is about $99, so you might want to check into it if you want to use it, but it does some really nifty things. So, let's take a look at it now. So, when I come up top, and I, once I've placed all my pile, what I can do is I can actually go up top and run this tool. Now, when we run the tool, now it's going to ask me because I'm running the trial version. Uh, what do you want to actually add coordinates to? And you can see there is lots and lots of information here. So what it's going to do, it's going to gather the coordinates and add it as a shared parameter to the object. So I'm coming down here to structural foundation. That's what we have. So it's coming on down here. There it is, structural foundation. So now it says it's found 24 objects when I hit OK. What it does, it runs a script, and then I hit OK again. Uh, so at this point, let's see what's actually happened. You'll notice now the object that is highlighted, notice it has coordinates. You also have an easting and a northing. These are the ones we'll be using because our zero is actually right here. Now, I'm going to go back if you didn't see the previous video. Uh, in the previous video, we came down here, and we actually set that zero. Now I'm going to go ahead and say reveal hidden elements so we can see where it is and you see I moved the zero to right here. Now at this point by using this little app it's using the survey point to give us that information. So let's go back to the pile level and see what we have. So at this point we have the piles and here they are. Now another thing we may want to do is number the pile. I can come in here and I'll just give this one a number. I'll come down here and you see you have a mark. I'll give this one a number two. Now, another feature we may do is actually take and turn off this particular category. I'm going to say hide in view category. And now we can quickly number them or do what we need to do. So by running that little script or that little plugin, you'll notice that now the pile has that extended data. So now time to create a quick report. So what I'm going to do is go up top to view. I'll now say create a uh, schedule, scheduling quantities. And I come down here and I'll again pick structural foundation. Now, if we wouldn't have run that script, what would happen is you would not have certain parameters in here. Now, some of them, as we come down, you see you have easting. I can push that over. And we have a northing, which we're going to come down a little bit further and pop that over. So those are the numbers we need. Some other things we might consider is to verify that we pulled pulling the right information. Let's bring in family. We'll also bring in type and mark. Now, I'm just kind of picking them as I go here. And then we'll sort them over here. I'll bring these two down. <clears throat> and there we go. Let's give it a, a whirl and see what happens. We hit OK. And there's our, there is our report. So this can then be placed on a sheet. And it could tie into the mark. 
Now, I've added family uh, mark and type. You don't have to use this. It's just a quick way for us to verify that it is all the right elements that are being drawn for this schedule. I can then hide the ones I don't need. Some quick ways to do that would just come up top and hit hide, uh, and that would get rid of those elements. So some quick tips there. Now, what if you say, hey, uh, that's all great and stuff, but I don't want to pay all kind of money to use this tool. Now, for 99 bucks, it may be worth it. Uh, again, that's going to be your call. But what if you say, I don't have that kind of cash to be burning on this. There's some other things I can do. And there are. Um, depending on the version of Revit you're in, Revit does add some data to certain items. For instance, now this is a foundation, uh, a structural foundation item. If you use a column, now you can use columns up and down. I'll go to structure. Now I'm going to use a column here, and you could use, again, a round column that would represent a, let's say, a pile. So I hit the column here. Now at this point, you see it says depth, and I'll say go down to, let's say, 20 feet. Okay, now what is it going to come off of? Well, I'm standing on the pile level, so that's what it's, where it's going to come off of. Now I'm going to put it out here in yard like so. Now when I place it and I select that element, you'll notice that it's actually coming off of, it looks at these elements. See, it's, seeing, it's looking at A. See, it reaches over, it sees A, and it reaches over and sees 4. So you notice how we're actually getting that data here. So you can do a quick little uh, trick here. Now, you may have to put these on a different work set or turn them off, but here is the kind of workaround if you don't want to pay extra. I'm going to come up top, architecture, and let's assume that the, none of these were here. Um, and I, what I'd do is come down here and, well, let's just do it. Let's just delete these out. You could use some other element for this because what it's going to do is going to look at this. And this is actually, I'm going to call this, this would be X axis. If, if I was measuring off of here, that would be the distance in the X axis, right? And if I came down here and I'm measuring off of this, this would be Y axis. So I'll change this one to Y. Now, I'm going to use lowercase here just so we can prove a point, uh, and you can see that it's nothing. It's the ones that I just put in. Now, I'll move this to right here. Now, notice what it's doing here. You'll see that it actually put in the X and the Y based off of those numbers. And the reason I use these, so it reads right. See, it says X and Y. So you could check this with some uh, dimensions if you want. I can put a dimension from here to here. You'll see that that says 8, and when I come from here to here, you'll notice that it says 18. Now, when I grab that column, you'll notice that it's giving us those numbers. So in reality, if I grab these and I copied a bunch of them around, let's say copy, and I just started to place them all over. Let me turn off the uh, constraint. We'll pop these things all over the place. All right, now let's go create us a quick schedule. So we just use a different element. Now, they don't have to be an I-beam. You could go load a cylindrical column and make it go down. If I go to 3D, notice they're going down just like the other piling. And they're actually starting off at pile, which is zero there. So let's go ahead. If they were up or down, you could also note that. For instance, I'm going to say top offset one foot. So notice now we can also deal with the Z if you'd like to. So let's go ahead and get, run us a quick little schedule view. Drop this down, schedules and quantities. Come on down here. And we're going to say, let's, this here is a structural column. I'll go to new construction, hit OK. And we're going to, again, ask for information here. So at this point, uh, what do we want? Well, I want the mark. Again, you'll have to note them yourself. I'll say family. And we'll do type again. Just wanted to get some type of anchor so we know what we're dealing with. And then we're going to come through here and we start to look at the, uh, the different options we have. And you'll see column location mark. We'll go ahead and push that in. And we'll may say, maybe say level. And then offset from that level. Uh, let's say uh, top offset. Push that in and top level. Okay. We'll hit OK. It's going to be a bunch of raw data but you get the idea. So here we go. You'll notice that we're getting the information here where the X and Y are coming in, and you can see the X and Ys are all the way down. And then you'll see we have our top of level. This is our zero. And then any offsets from that zero. So you could zero this out, and if they were higher or lower, it would tell you in the positive or negative where the Z is. So that's a, another way to utilize the tools in Revit to do what you need to do. So hopefully that helps out. Some tips and tricks on how to use pile or columns in Revit.